Many people ask me how I got into human design, and well, technically speaking, um, I was on a surf trip in El Salvador when I was invited by a manifester to go see a, a wonderful human design teacher by the name of Doug Hetrick, who still offers analysis and who did my first reading. But that's not the real story. The real story started uh, maybe six to eight years prior. Um, I was right around my Saturn return, which I didn't understand at the time, obviously. I was around 27, 28 years old. I had been in uh, commercial real estate for over 10 years or about 10 years. From 17, I had started selling houses, then apartments, and then actually um, subdivisions, large subdivisions and lots of money involved. And I had worked my way up this corporate real estate ladder. And um, I went through a, uh, a complete uh, meltdown. Uh, I'm not going to pretend that uh, this trip wasn't helped by uh, lots of different substances, and, but I went through a two or three day period that um, I was certainly not like what Ra's experience was, but it was an experience nonetheless. Uh, it, was not, um, it was not based in this reality. And uh, there was like two or three days where, and I, was, I had just finished a season of skydiving as well, and I think it was just all the pressure and it was the timing and the place and everything else, I had this really trippy experience where I was taken on this kind of shamanic journey. Um, at one point I saw, um, you know, like an eagle in the sky and I was seeing from its perspective and all of a sudden I saw the rat on the ground and, and the eagle dived, or I believe it was a hawk, and it dived and it grabbed the rat and it tore it to pieces and then the blood went into the earth and then the, the blood became the mineral and the mineral came back up through the grass and it was kind of this entire cycle of life shamanic vision I had. But in that vision, and it literally lasted like two to three days because it was like over a period where I, had, I, I mean, I totally was nuts. I mean, I had lost my mind. I was talking to people that were not there. I was communicating with entities or visions or whatevers that uh, did not exist because I checked in later with uh, some of the people I thought were there and they weren't there. They weren't even in the same town that weekend. One of them was my, uh, my good friend, Max, who I used to be on a skydiving team with. If, uh, He's a crazy Italian that I heard back in Italy. If anybody runs into him, please have him get in touch with me. You know, he's a jeweler and an ex-skydiving guy. Um, but I was talking to him for two or three days in this vision that I was having. But in the vision, he was an alien. And he had on his dark glasses. He always wore, he was a very cool guy, you know, Max. And he had on these dark glasses. And he was telling me all this stuff. And unlike Raw, I don't remember almost any of this. But what I did get... Um, what I did get from that experience was that um, it was about the rave, it was about saving the children of the world, and I was supposed to meet the shaman. Now, this is why I giggle when people come to me after having so-called spiritual experiences. This is what I thought that meant. Those of you in human design are probably already giggling, but what I, what I thought that meant was I was supposed to go to the rave, meet the shaman, and uh, save the children of the world, <laughs> literally. Guys, I mean, I was so cracked that I walked into this, you know, commercial real estate office after, you know, working my way up the ladder and, and you know, I'm telling them I'm going to go save the world, basically. And I go, went out and I started chasing all these rave parties around Southern California. And at each one with this expectation, I was going to meet this shaman that was going to impart this information to me and that I was going to... Um, uh, you know, go save the children of the world, whatever the hell that means. I mean, even now, as I, I, mean, I giggle as I, I, I tell the story because I see how out of my mind I was. I was totally lost it. And I'm a six-line being, and they say that, you know, technically the six-line being should go crazy at least once in its life. Um, so I got that covered, guys. I, I think I've been crazy more than once, but uh, this was by far the most extreme. And... Um, so I, I go running around the desert looking for the shaman the, to, to give me this information so that I can save the world, right? Okay, so after two or three years of this nonsense, I finally go, wait a second, you know, I was nuts. Um, you know, it's another interesting thing that I, a little comedy in that is I, I woke up that morning. I was in Southern California in Mission Beach, California, uh, San Diego. And I was on Mission Boulevard, and my address, I walked out, outside that morning after this two or three days, literally two or three days of this intense, 
whatever it was. I don't want to call it anything. And you know what? I heard Roz got keynotes for all of these types of experiences too. So if this sounds like one of them and one of you has studied all that stuff, you can let me know. That guy's got information on everything. So if he's already got keynotes on my spiritual experience, I'd like to know about it because I've never studied any of that stuff. Um, I walked outside and the address was 2888, Mission to Infinity. All of a sudden that made sense to me somehow. And so uh, my friends on the rave scene started calling me Johnny Mission because I was on this mission. And it was just this really funny time in my life, guys. I mean, look, I mean, I admit it. I was nuts, okay? I mean, I was out of my freaking mind. 